Hello and welcome to another session on stopping by woods on a snowy evening. In this session, our objective will be to understand the essence of poem stopping by woods on a snowy evening, understand the strengths of the poem stopping by woods on a snowy evening, understand the weaknesses of the poem stopping by woods on a snowy evening. And the question is, as a critical thinker, Explain the strengths and weaknesses of the poem Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening. Let us now begin by summarizing the poem. Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening is a beautiful poem composed by Robert Forst. The poem has an important lesson with a strong message. If we take a look at the poem, we can derive the poet's infatuation with nature. The poem seems quite straightforward in the first glance. However, if we dissect the poem, then we can find deep metaphors in it. In the poem, the poet seems to be on his way back to his home on a snowy evening. There is a beautiful forest on the way and he stops his horse and himself to feel its peace and tranquility. The breeze and downy lake add more beauty to the peaceful forest. It is the night time and there is no one to break the silence. However, the horse finds it quite strange stopping there as the spot is not their destination and the darkness is growing. In the end, the poet realizes that he cannot stop any further even if the beauty of the forest is enchanting because he has promises to keep and goals to reach before he sleeps. Now that we know about the basic summary of the poem, let us scrutinize the strengths and weaknesses of the poem. To begin with the strengths, the poem is a pleasant read to the readers and one can see that Robert Frost has a unique love for the nature and the natural world. The poem also talks about the beauty of the nature in even the darkest of elements like the frozen lake, darkness and cold weather. However, metaphorically, the woods may be representing various attractive, luring events, temptations and fantasies. The poet yearns to stay and enjoy this world because unlike the real world, it has no obligations, duties and responsibilities. The passerby in the poem could be all of us in the real life. Similarly, the horse could be symbolizing the consciousness of the humans. Nature indeed has healing properties. It can heal the human psyche and set us free from our labors and drudgeries. One of the romantic aspects of the poem is the wood's beauty and then the reality that danger lurks in beauty at times. One of the major strengths or the qualities of the poem are the realism and the romanticism portrayed in it. Even though the poem captures a sense of tension of the real world, it has been excellently portrayed through fine writing. The world of wilderness both comes and puzzles the poet and he even wishes to remain in it for a long time. However, in the end, the sense of responsibility awakens him and the poet doesn't go chasing behind the nature. He knows that he has not fulfilled all the obligations in his everyday world and that he must return to it because he has promises to keep and miles to go before he sleeps. The verb sleep may symbolically refer to death which may be embodied by this world of wilderness. The poet conveys the message that all of us have miles to go before we meet our ultimate death, but before that, we must remind ourselves of the duties and responsibilities that we must commit to. Now, let us move on to some of the weaknesses. In the beginning of the poem, the poet seems to forget his responsibilities towards his family, friends and community as he gauges the beauty of woods. That makes us question. If everybody finds the nature so beautiful that it makes them forget about their duties and responsibilities completely, the beauty of nature gives us a sense of joy and enjoyment for a moment, but that doesn't mean that we have the right to forget what and who we are. Responsibilities come first before anything, and I believe that the whole concept of linking duties and responsibilities of a person with natural beauties is unjustified, don't you? Similarly, the poet has looked at life from only one perspective. 
Nature isn't the only beautiful thing that everyone desires. There are other several products of modern science and technology which have become an inseparable part of the modern world. The poet does not take these things under consideration. So that's all for today's session. Let us quickly review what we have covered in this session. The poem mainly revolves around the poet's infatuation with nature. The poem seems quite straightforward in the first glance. However, if we dissect the poem, then we can find deep metaphors in it. In the end, the poet realizes that he cannot stop any further, even if the beauty of the forest is enchanting, because he has promises to keep and goals to reach before he sleeps. The poem also talks about the beauty of the nature in even the darkest of elements like the frozen lake, darkness and cold weather. The poet yearns to stay and enjoy this world because unlike the real world, it has no obligations, duties and responsibilities. One of the romantic aspects of the poem is the wood's beauty and then the reality that danger lurks in beauty at times. One of the major strengths or the qualities of the poem are the realism and the romanticism portrayed in it. The poet conveys the message that all of us have miles to go before we meet our ultimate death. But before that, we must remind ourselves of the duties and responsibilities that we must commit to. With that, we've come to the end of this session. Hope this was helpful to you. Thank you and see you in our next session.